Whiskey Alpha 2, India Victor Delta. Uh, India Victor Delta, again please. Whiskey America 2, India Victor Delta. Roger, Whiskey America 2, India Victor Delta. Hi everyone, uh, it's Tom, WA2IVD. It's New Year's Day 2021 as I'm recording this, so Happy New Year to everybody. This time we're going to look at the user interface basics for the 705. For this video, I'm going to apologize in advance for two things. First, this video is really long. I've been trying to keep these videos to 20 minutes or less, but the IC705 has so many functions and features that I'll never get through everything if I don't make some of these a little bit longer. If you don't want to suffer through the entire video, I've put time hacks in the description for the major areas, so you can skip directly to a particular item that you might be interested in. Second, I'll apologize that the mic audio in most of these segments is a little bit hot. I'm working on a new microphone arrangement, and I didn't quite get the levels adjusted right this time, so I appreciate your patience and tolerance for that. All right, there's a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. The power button is pretty straightforward. You press and hold it to turn the power on, and you'll get the green indicator light. Now a, uh, here, let's uh, turn the volume down a little bit here on the radio. And if you briefly press the power button, it turns off the display to save battery power. And you'll get the orange indicator on the LED next to the power button to tell you that. And then another brief press turns the display back on. You can change the power button so that a brief press will actually take a snapshot of the current screen display. That's in some other settings. We'll cover that in another video. Uh, the power button or actually any key will also bring the display back on if the display times out. Uh, the difference with turning the display off with the power button is other knobs or buttons will not bring the display back but the power button will and then of course if you press and hold the power button then it will power off the radio that pretty much covers the power button let's look at the AF RF gain and squelch knob on virtually all modern HF radios ICOM and other brands uh, they use a concentric knob for this where the center knob is audio frequency gain or volume. And this knob is the volume on the 705. Where the 705 departs from this is the same knob actually does all three functions. And the way you get to the other two functions is you press the knob and you'll get the display here. Now if I don't do anything that display goes away after a few seconds. So if I press the knob and I turn as soon as I press it, the default function once you press it is squelch. And you can adjust your squelch setting. And you can tell the squelch setting by A, hearing the audio go away. And also once, whoops, hang on. I waited too long. Um, you can also see the little pip mark on the signal strength display up here that shows where the squelch level will cut in and out. Up to about 49% the squelch is what's called audio squelch and then once you get above 50% the little mark will show up and then it'll actually be based on signal strength. So below 50% it's based on noise and above 50% it's based on signal strength. You're going to use the noise squelch primarily on uh, FM and AM. Let's turn the audio gain back down a little here. And then finally if you press this and then touch on the screen the RF gain one then you can adjust the RF gain up and down and of course you can see 
on my scope display as I'm lowering the gain. The one nice thing about switching from two concentric knobs here is that, at least in ICOM's implementation with the concentric knobs, you basically had for the outer knob that was the RF gain and squelch, you had half of the knob turn was effectively RF gain and the other half of it was squelch. Um, and with this approach, you basically get the entire range um, for squelch and RF gain. You can set both of them independently to whatever levels you want. So you do get a little more flexibility with it that way. The tuning knob is similar to other recent ICOM radios, uh, 7300 and the 7100, for example. And if you are in sideband, CW, or RIDI modes, the default is the finer tuning. So you're tuning basically in 10 hertz steps if, I, if you don't change any settings at all. And then if you want to tune in larger steps, if you touch the kilohertz portion of the display, let me do that so you can see it a little better here, you'll see that this little dot showed up above the display here. And actually, let me, let's go back to our audio gain. I'm going to turn this up, and I'm going to turn the squelch way up. So you can hear the beeps at least. So if you touch the kilohertz part of the display, you get this little marker above the display. And now when I tune the main tuning knob, it's tuning in kilohertz steps. And right now it's in one kilohertz steps. If I press and hold the kilohertz part of the display, you'll get a menu that allows you to select what step size you want. Uh, again, the default for CW, sideband, and RIDI is 1 kilohertz, which is what we were set to. But if I want to do slightly larger or slightly smaller steps, so let's say I want to do a half kilohertz uh, increment, now I'm tuning in 500 hertz steps. And you can set this to anything you want. Now, there's two pages of this. It actually goes all the way up to 100 kilohertz steps. On HF, certainly this doesn't make much sense. You'd be tuning across an entire band in one or two clicks. Um, but, you know, you may want uh, 100 hertz steps, so a little bit more coarse than with this off, but not much more coarse. Those step sizes are remembered based on mode. So, for example, I'm in sideband, and again, sideband, CW, RIDI, uh, all use the same, the same step size. Now, you wouldn't normally go to FM on 20 meters, but I'm going to go to FM here just to illustrate that you'll notice here the step size on FM is 5 kilohertz, and that's because up on VHF and UHF, where I would normally or more often be on FM, I have the step size set there. So if I change the step size, say for example, to 10 kilohertz, now it goes in 10 kilohertz steps. And if I go back to sideband, it remembered that I was on 100 hertz steps for that. So um, again, the, the step size is based on mode, not on the band that you're on. And um, the other step increment you can go to, if I turn off the kilohertz tuning and go back down here to finer tuning, it's in 10 hertz steps. If I press and hold the 10 and 100 hertz digits, you can go even finer and actually tune in 1 hertz steps. So you can get very, very fine. So let me turn the squelch back down here. And I've tuned all the way to the bottom end of the band. Let's uh, let's go back up here and get to some audio.
All right. Now we're back up here. We'll find... And, of course, I can't move very fast because I've now switched it to one hertz. <laughs> Steps. There we go. So if you want to really, really fine-tune somebody's audio, then uh, you can go all the way down to one hertz steps. And you might find the one hertz steps useful, uh, for example, if you're operating CW and you're very particular about the side tone frequency. Um, possibly for some digital modes, although you'll, you'll usually be doing that tuning on the computer side and not so much with the dial, but you can get all the way down to one hertz steps. And if we uh, touch, the, touch and hold that again, then uh, it goes back to the 10 hertz steps, which is the default. The next knob we're going to look at is the multi-knob, multi-function knob. And this knob on the 705 is different than if you're familiar with the 7300, for example, in that it had, can do, it does multiple functions, which it does on the 7300, but it also has a programmable default function. And the default function is displayed up in the upper right corner of the display here. And you'll see right now it says uh, KHZ, or kilohertz. And the main tuning knob, we talked about how if you press the kilohertz, you can tune in kilohertz steps. Well, without pressing that, if this is displaying kilohertz here for the multifunction knob, you can turn the multifunction knob and it will tune in kilohertz steps and the step size you'll see right now as I turn this it's 500 hertz steps and that's because that's what I have the tuning step set to for sideband right now so if I change this for example to one kilohertz steps and I turn off the kilohertz tuning for the main knob, the multi knob now follows one kilohertz step. So it's kilohertz and it's whatever you have the setting set for. So this is just a convenient way to, if you need to quickly move up or down the band and then you can still use the main tuning knob without having to switch modes on the main tuning knob. So that's kind of a convenient function. Then if you press the multi knob you get the menu of other functions so the def the default menu when you are in sideband um, and in CW shows RF power mic gain compressor compression level and monitor level and you can exit this menu either by pressing the little back arrow button here or you can exit it by pressing the exit button and the highlighted one shows you which one you're going to adjust so for example if i touch rf power i can turn my rf power up and down and the other thing that you can do with the multi knob is if there is a particular function that you want to be able to use a lot or conveniently you can assign that to the multi knob when it's uh, without going into the specific menu so let's say for example that I want to adjust my mic gain and I like adjusting it up and down frequently if I press and hold that the menu goes away and you'll notice that the little display up here now changed to mic G or mic gain so if I turn the knob the little menu expands and it'll show me my current setting for mic gain so I can adjust my mic gain and have that be assigned to the knob. If you press and hold the multi knob 
it goes back to the default kilohertz setting. And as we go through some of the other parameters that the multi knob adjusts, I'll show you how you can assign those. But the the first one, if you the the ones that come up on this screen, if you press and hold any one of these, it will assign that function to the multi knob. We'll just do one more here. So if I go to RF power and press and hold that, now you'll see it says RF power. And if I adjust the knob, you'll see that that expands and shows me the current setting. So uh, that's a very nice feature that they've implemented uh, that I like for the user interface. So you can assign to this anything that you're using a little more frequently. So instead of turning the volume down, I'm going to turn the squelch up so that you can still hear the beeps as I press things. The bottom menu of the 705, if you're familiar with the ICOM 7300, this is actually uh, identical. So you have five fixed physical buttons here, menu, function, M-scope, quick, and exit. And what you get for each of these functions is similar, but not exactly the same as the 7300. Again, if you're familiar with that radio. So let's take a look at each of these. With menu, when you press it, it gives you a menu that gives you a variety of things. And the menu is actually two pages because there's quite a bit of functions on the 705. So there's some added items, again, compared to the 7300. So you've got scope, audio scope, uh, voice settings, meter settings, uh, SWR, that's for doing an SWR sweep, memory-related functions, scanning functions, the MPAD memories, we'll talk about those in another video. Record, if you want to do audio recording of your uh, QSOs. And then the set function, and this takes you to the settings menu. If I go to the second page, we have uh, things related to the uh, digital voice memory. And then we have CS. You know, I'm not even sure what, oh, CS is call sign functions. So this is for digital voice. See, I'm learning right along with you. And then this CD. Again, this is digital voice. This is your some call history and that. When we do in D-Star, we'll talk about those in more detail. I haven't played with some of these myself yet. Uh, and then this is more digital voice auto reply, digital voice gateway, picture. You can receive pictures with the 705 over uh, ICOM's digital uh, D-Star transmission mode, uh, data transmission modes and then GPS functions, and then set, which takes you to the settings menu, and the set function is the same on both page one and two. So the bottom right choice is settings, and it's the same settings whether you're on page one or two. They just let you access it from either page. We'll go through all of these other items in detail. That's going to take a few videos to get through. So let's move on and we'll look at the function button. And the function button gives you functions that would normally be on buttons on the front of a radio. And the because of the small panel size on the 705, there's just not room for buttons for all of these things. So we've got the preamp settings. So you can turn preamp one on. If you press it again, you get preamp two. If you press it a third time, it turns off the preamps. If you press and hold it, it turns on the attenuator. AGC sets your response time. So you've got slow, medium, and fast. Sorry, slow, fast, and medium. And if you press and hold it, and on most of these, well, for, attenu for preamp, if you press and hold, it takes you to the attenuator. For most of the touchscreen functions and most of the buttons, actually, Pressing and holding will take you to a menu that is specific to that function. So 
pressing and holding the AGC allows you to actually set the response time for slow, medium, and fast. And the exit button, which I hadn't covered yet, but the exit button basically will exit you out of any menu that you happen to be in. So notch filter, noise blanker, noise reduction, that's digital noise reduction, split frequency operation, uh, Vox turning it on, and settings. Now Vox, there actually is a physical button here, and the Vox touch button and the Vox physical button do the same thing. So this is identical to this button. Um, compression for the uh, uh, compressor for giving a little more punch to your audio. Transmit bandwidth. Monitor on and off. And monitor on and off on here is uh, actually, again, similar to the monitor menu here um, that you get with the multifunction button. So some items, a number of items, actually, on the 705, like other ICOM touchscreen radios, there's multiple ways to access them. Uh, so monitor, and again, because the 705 has so many functions, there's actually two pages. So if we go to the second page, duplex, this is for uh, repeaters on 10 meters, 2 meters, 10, 6 meters, and uh, 440. So this sets your duplex setting, duplex plus, minus, and off. And the actual offset is programmable by band. And then max power level, you can actually set the maximum power level that you can turn with the multi-knob. So the default, it's 10 watts right now. Now I'm on 12 volts. If I was only on battery power, this would say 5 watts. But the default is the maximum the radio can do. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. You turn the knob to adjust it. You can, um, again, I'm learning these with you. So the max power setting, I can set it so that no matter if I turn the knob all the way up, it won't go above 5 watts. Or if I turn the knob all the way up, it won't go above 1 watt. So if you want to work QRP or, for example, ultra QRP, you can force the maximum power level down so that it prevents you from accidentally turning it above, you know, some preset level that you'd like. And then there's one more function here, and you'll see it's a little bit grayed out, and it says tuner, and there is a tuner connector, and we'll talk about that again in another video. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the details of these other functions in another video, but again, that's how you access all of these with the function button. The next button is M-Scope, and this is the scope that's on here right now. So if you press the button, uh, basically each time you press it, it cycles through whether the scope is on or off. So this is no um, scope if you don't want to see the spectrum scope or monitor scope. If I press it, it turns the scope on. If I press and hold it, it will expand it to the larger size. And that's pretty much all that does is toggle through the scope settings. And then there is the quick button. And this takes you to quick functions or, you know, basically what ICOM has decided are frequently used functions. So we'll go all the way to the top. Group select, this is for memories. The memories on the 705 are divided into groups. Channel select group range, and that again affects how memory operation works. We're going to cover those in, uh, in detail in some other videos. Meter select allows you to select what the meter display is when you are transmitting. Uh, and you don't actually need to do that from the quick menu. We'll cover that later. GPS information, if you want to just get a quick read on what your current GPS information is. I'm in a basement here right now, so you'll notice I don't really have very good uh, GPS coverage. And again, anytime you see this little back arrow here, this is to exit the menu you're in. And in all cases, the exit button does the same thing. So if there is a back arrow you can exit out that way, and if not, you can always exit out with the exit button. 
And then let's scroll down GPS position. This tells you what your current position is. Again, I don't have a good lock where I am right now. And then weather channel functions and home channel setting. And then um, voltage, if you want to just see what the battery voltage is, they've got that on the quick menu. And then finally, record start. And this is if you want to record your the audio that you're receiving and transmitting to the micro SD card that's on the quick menu. So those are the quick menu. Those are basically settings that are... Uh, that ICOMS decided are the, the quick ones that you're, you might want to use more frequently. The exit button we've already discussed, and so that covers all of those physical buttons on the bottom of the display. So as I've been demonstrating many of the functions here, I've been using the touchscreen I haven't really talked about the details on the touchscreen. There's uh, a lot of things that um, you can do. Some of them probably are already obvious, but from what I've done in previous segments here. Um, to change your mode, you actually touch the mode. So I'm in upper sideband right now. If I touch that, it brings up the mode menu, and here's all my choices. Uh, single sideband, CW, RIDI, AM, FM, digital voice, or D-Star. Wide FM, the 705 can receive regular FM broadcast stations. So that's the wide FM. And then data is not really a separate mode. It is what I'm going to call a sub-mode. And I'll show you briefly here. We're on sideband. If I touch data you'll see that the display just changed to USB-D, which is USB data mode. And what data changes is where the radio gets its modulation from. It changes the, some default filters. Um, you'll notice it says filter 2 here, and it was filter 1 a minute ago. If I touch data again, it will turn it off, and you'll see we've gone back to filter 1. So... Data is a sub-mode. You can put data on any mode. So you can be in FM and go to FM data. Actually, I don't think you can with CW, but with pretty much all of the other modes, you can have that mode be for voice or for data with dash D if you press data. Now the other one, I'm on upper sideband, which is the default for uh, bands above 7 megahertz. So 40 meters and below, if you're new to HF, is by convention lower sideband for audio. And above 40 meters, the convention is upper sideband for audio. And with the 705 and pretty much any modern rig from ICOM or anybody else, the default mode that it'll put you in on sideband will match those conventions. But Every now and then, you may have somebody that you're, you've got a sked with and you're working on a reverse sideband, or you may have some reason you want to go on the other sideband. So to change the sideband you're on, if I touch this and bring up the menu, if I just touch sideband again, it changed me to lower sideband. So to change between upper and lower sideband, you just hit the mode sideband, the mode you're already in. Um, so now I could go to AM, for example, puts me in AM mode. And the one other mode that has two pieces to it is CW. Again, we'll cover this in more detail. CW, um, and I've got the squelch all the way up here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go all the way down to the bottom of the band here. Uh, I don't have anything set up to tune fast. Sorry. Let's go in one kilohertz steps. We'll go down to CW and turn the squelch off just so you can see this. Normally when you're in CW, all right, we got some signals there. When you are in CW, the, uh, let me zoom in. Uh, we'll cover how we're doing all of this stuff with the, Scope stuff later. Oh, let's get out of 
So CW defines where the side tone is generated on which sideband or which side of it. And you see the signal there and you hear this. If I go to CW reverse, you notice if I move it to the other side of the carrier, I get the same tone. So CW reverse reverses which side of the carrier it's generating the side tone from. And again, you can toggle that back and forth with CW. So those are all of the different modes and how you switch between them. And yes, as I thought with data, there is no data mode for CW. For pretty much all the other modes, you have data. So I can have AM data or AM not data and so forth. So that's the mode settings. The other setting on the touchscreen display that you'll be using frequently is the band setting. And to get to a different band, if you just touch the megahertz display, this gives you all of your band choices. So you've got, you know, the, the amateur bands are here, 160 meters all the way up through 440. And then you've got FM radio. This takes you to standard broadcast FM radio. And then you've also got whoops and it and that by default has you in wide mode let me touch the megahertz again airband the 705 actually can receive the aircraft airband and it takes you to that band in am so that's another bonus band and then what says genie here and genie is just short for general coverage and this is the general coverage receiver so now this is down in the the united the u.s AM broadcast band, but you can use general coverage for anything if you're listening to short wave stations up around, you know, five or six or nine megahertz or whatever. That's the general coverage band. So you can be anywhere on that. And if I go back to another band, if I go back to general coverage now, it'll remember where I was. So it's it's essentially just another HF band, but it's intended primarily for shortwave listening and so forth. So that's how you change the band that you're on. Now, you may have noticed I touched the filter setting up here. There are three built-in filters, filter 1, 2, and 3, and if I want to change the filter, I just touch the filter. And I'm going to cover how you set the filters and what you can do with those in another... Um, in another video. Let's go back to 20 meters and let me go to the entire band here. And again, we'll cover scope settings in another video. There's going to be a lot of videos for this radio, I'm afraid. One of the really cool things for tuning this radio is let me go back to single sideband and we'll turn this up a little. So I'm down here in the CW portion and I want to listen to somebody on single sideband. And I say, oh, look at this on the scope here. This looks like a really strong signal. If you touch that, it zooms in on it and gives you kind of a frozen image of it. And then if you touch in there, it will tune the radio to exactly where you touch. Now... Unless you're very precise with your touch, you probably aren't going to hit exactly where you want to be. But, but you can get pretty close. So I see a signal here. If I want to tune to that, touch that, and then touch that part, and it brings me there. So that is a really nice feature. Now this, I bet, is probably uh, FT8 down here because there's always FT8 on every band going on. If I touch that, and so that's one of the coolest features of these touchscreen radios, as far as I'm concerned, is the fact that you can just touch the part of the spectrum that you want to tune to and then touch in the little zoomed in window and it takes you right to that frequency. Okay, another piece of the touch display um, on most radios where you've got VFO and memory 
There are physical buttons for those. Again, because of the small panel space on the 705, there are no physical buttons to switch between VFO mode, memory mode, and, um, and to change memory channels and so forth. So uh, the way you would get to that, as you've seen from the rest of the, disc the touch screen, is as you would guess, if I touch up here where it says VFO, I get a submenu for VFO and memory. And so I can touch memo, and that puts me in memory mode, and it'll put whatever the last memory that I had in there, which I'm on a UHF frequency. So let me touch that again. We'll go, whoops, sorry, I was still in there. Um, I'll go back to VFO. If I want to switch between VFO A and B, there's the AB right here, which takes me to my BVFO. <clears throat> which currently has a 2 meter frequency in it. And let's say I want to do some tuning around on two VFOs. Maybe I'm working a contest or a special event, and I want to have a couple of 20 meter frequencies in here, and I want to remember this one and just move up a little and be able to switch back and forth. If you press and hold the AB, and I don't know if you heard that, I've got the volume turned pretty low. When I pressed it, I got a beep, and as I held it, I got a double beep. When you press and hold the AB, it transfers your current frequency into the other VFO, whichever one you're not on. So if you're on A, it transfers it into B. If you're on B, it transfers it into A. So now, when I switch VFOs, I'm in VFO B, and I have the same frequency I was on. So I can say move up the band here and we'll turn the volume up a little bit here i can move up the band and now when i switch between a and b i'm switching between the same band uh, call takes you to call channels call channels only apply on two meters and 440 and then there are a number of functions here for memory write memory clear uh, select functions with memories. We'll talk about all of those in M, M, and then the little arrow VFO. If you're on a memory channel, this will take it and put the memory channel that you're on into the VFO. And all of the details of the memory channels and memory channel management and operation will be in another video. So there's your video, or excuse me, your memory and VFO operations. And that's kind of the key items on the display for touchscreen. Oh, one other one, the meter. Uh, in the other segment with the buttons where I was talking about uh, the quick menu for the meter. So right now, let me turn that volume down. Uh, in receive, you're always getting signal strength on this meter. But it says SWR, so if I transmit right now, and I'll just... Uh, it gives you SWR when you transmit. If I just briefly touch the meter, it changes what I'm displaying. So I really don't need the quick menu to do that. So ALC, which is my limiter control level, uh, my compression level, if I have my compressor turned on, uh, VD, this is the voltage display. So uh, that's the voltage that's going on again it'll only go to voltage when you transmit id which is current this is the current going into the final amplifier so you can see how much current the radio is using and po which is actually my power output and that's in a percentage although it does show you up here that a hundred percent is 10 watts and i believe let me just see here yeah if i unplug the 12 volt power, you'll see that 100% now becomes 5 watts because on battery power, you only have 5 watts of output power versus 10 watts when you're on 12 volt power. So this is in a percentage, but it tells you what 100% means. And then one other thing is if you press and hold the meter, you will get the expanded meter, which basically gives you all of them at once, and it gives you a little voltage display and temperature display on the right. So you can see right now I've got 12 volts. This is not a real accurate display, but it gives you an idea where you are. Again, I'll unplug the 12-volt power cord here, 
And now you can see I'm, you know, somewhere around 8 volts because I'm on the internal battery. And temperature display just shows you the temperature of your final transistor. So if you're doing a lot of long-winded talking or working digital modes, you'll see that go up as it gets hot. And that's pretty much everything on the touchscreen display. Okay, if you stuck with me this long, thank you. This was a lot for one video, so I'll be quick. If you liked the video or you found it useful, I'd appreciate a click on the like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider clicking on the subscribe button, and you can also click on the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. You'll find time marks for each topic in this video in the description. Please check out the channel's companion website at a to z.tech. There's a link to that in the description also. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.